denying that the last year or so has been brutal for everyone. Friends and families separated by an invisible and relentless enemy. Livelihoods destroyed and much, much worse than anything else, lives tragically cut short. And for those of us, such as the bikers, the travellers, and anyone else who craves those basic human instincts of freedom and adventure, this last year has been nothing short of anathema. But in spite of these hardships, maybe there are lessons we can learn. In defiance of every deprivation, every cancelled plan, every closed door, every hour spent longingly looking out the window. Never, ever again, can we take our freedom for granted. Never again should we put off taking that road we've always wanted to travel. Never again can we justify not making that trip of a lifetime. Never again can we take the most basic human needs, such as our freedom and our health, for granted. Not only do we owe it to ourselves, but we also owe it to everyone who will tragically never have the opportunity. Now it's time to live. Now it's time to be free. Now is the time to take that ride. It had been two years since I'd last seen my family in Northern Ireland. In the past we'd always flown over, but with the ongoing Covid yoing of yes, no with flying, we decided to ride our Harleys from our home in Essex to Liverpool and take the ferry to Belfast. And that's right, Dolly was coming with us. Neither of us had taken our bikes on the ferry before, so it was to be a new adventure for both of us. We left home at 9.30am. It was already growing hot and the plan had been to take our time and make frequent stops on the 240 mile journey. First things first, we needed breakfast. So we stopped at our favourite roadside diner. We've always tried to support small local businesses and after the last year or so, this was even more important than ever. After breakfast we experienced our first, but most definitely not our last, Amused inquiry by taking girl. a chihuahua on a sit down. Good girl, baby. Does, Good he, girl. does he ride the long walk? She, she, she yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She doesn't like getting uh, getting in the box, but once, but once she's, she's going, in, yeah, she's fine. Right. Yeah. As long as she sees. Do you, do you put the lid on? Tom? Yeah, it's got it's got everything oh, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Stay in. So it. Uh, in. 60 quid off eBay, but it acts as a, a dog bed and everything when, when she's off. It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's quite funny with a little edge sticking out. Yeah, once yeah. she, well, she settles down, she gets yeah. well into it. Yeah. yeah like she it. doesn't like it at first, though, that's yeah. all. Yeah, it helps. We have to get going quick and then she's <laughs> alright. <laughs> Thank you Thanks, very much. Thanks, Tart. I 
to you It's like my soul is set on fire But oh, I'm starting to feel tired Cause I can run but I The first stage of our journey took us past Stansted Airport, where we joined the M11 and headed towards Cambridge. En route we passed Duxford Military Museum and Airfield, a place we have both visited many times in the past. If you've never been, then I strongly urge you to make a point of visiting, as you will definitely not be disappointed. Our first planned stop was at Cambridge Services where we fuelled up and allowed both ourselves and Dolly a quick drink, leg stretch and comfort break. If you are travelling with your dog, then it's important to remember their needs may well be both greater and more frequent than your own, especially on a hot day. I'd recommend stopping every 100 to 150 miles. But, if your partner rides a Sportster with a peanut tank, you're likely to be stopping much, much more often. After the M11 we cut across country using the A14 that would lead us to the M6 motorway and towards Liverpool, our final destination. However, while on the A14 we had to make an unplanned stop at the services. For the last 20 miles or so I've been struggling to maintain power. A quick investigation revealed the glue holding my inner throttle sleeve to the outer had failed. Now this could be down to any number of reasons including the heat, but I suspect the real reason was shoddy workmanship. Luckily I always carry a tube of super glue in my toolkit, just for roadside emergencies such as this. Five minutes later, with both my fingers and the inner sleeve coated with glue, we were back on the road. We'd already planned to use the M6 toll motorway. It had been several years since I'd used this stretch of road, and I have to be honest, I was quite surprised to see the queues for the toll booths, when many other toll roads and bridges had switched to automatic number plate readers and online payments. Still, the queue moved quickly, and we were soon through the barriers and heading north again.
Anyone who's ever used the UK motorway will surely agree that they're both tedious and soul destroying, with little or nothing to see. Even on a Harley they can seem monotonous. And with almost all of this journey to Liverpool ridden on motorways, there was little else to do other than throttle down, ride hard and immerse yourself in your own thoughts. never just right, it's either too dry, or too wet, or too hot, or too cold. I much prefer riding in the summer, with sun on my face and blue skies above me. However, on this journey the heat was at times almost overpowering. Even a few minutes off the bike caused the sweat to start rolling, and following our last planned fuel and water stop, we were both grateful to see a motorway sign post telling us Liverpool was now less than 50 miles away. In theory that was only an hour's riding and almost within touching distance. As the miles rolled by I started to allow myself to dream of a hot shower and a cold beer. But the traffic gods had other plans. Filtering, or as my brothers and sisters in the States call it, lane splitting, is by far one of the most challenging and dangerous aspects of riding motorcycles on modern roads. And contrary to what a tired, frustrated and angry cager, who has been sitting stationary for hours in traffic will tell you, filtering is 100% legal. In fact it's necessary for motorcycles. You see all bikes, whether fitted with an oil cooling radiator or not, require air to cool their engines. And the only way to ensure this is to keep moving and avoid sitting idling for extended periods. A wise old and bold veteran biker once told me that when filtering, expect the cagers to do the unexpected. Expect them to try to change lanes without warning. 
Lloyd Pipes Save Lives. That timeless mantra uttered by bikers the world over is never more true than when filtering between lanes of stationary traffic. See, the truth is, most drivers hear my Vance and Hines big radius pipes before they see me. And most, and I say most, are courteous enough to move aside. And to those that do, I say thank you on behalf of all bikers. Traffic set us back about an hour, but eventually we made it through to clear roads. The final leg of our journey took us down the M62 and into Liverpool itself. It was at this point, just as we reached central Liverpool, that my beeline moto proved to be pretty useless. It simply couldn't update itself quick enough to keep up, and the tiny vague screen proved too difficult to follow while negotiating the rush hour traffic and unfamiliar roads. In all honesty, I hadn't actually been paying that much attention to it while on the motorways. Fortunately, our hotel was quite close to the River Mersey and the ferry terminal, and the route to the ferry was reasonably well signposted. In actual fact, the only drama we had was after finding the hotel, we struggled to locate the entrance. But after a quick reset, we finally found the car park, and as luck would have it, the last parking space. Yeah, just one night, two people, one little dog and two... Uh, can I pay for two motorbikes, yeah. please? Um, we've taken up a whole space out there, just the two motorbikes. Yeah, if, fine. yeah what I was going to say, right, if, if it's just preventing someone else from parking, we're happy to put them up on the... Okay, it's fine. Is he sure? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Put yeah. already online. Yeah, it's just the bikes. Oh, that's great, thanks. <laughs> A little chihuahua. Yeah. chihuahua. Yeah. She's got a box on the back where she's she's got a tether in, but she can put her head up. So every now and again, she put her head up, have a look around, go back to sleep. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? She's the coolest one of the lot. We get off, we're all sweaty. She sat there like that. Only thing you got to stop every hundred miles because she needs a wee. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much, Tap. Uh, room two three eight. I've got a parking ticket as well, so. Yeah. Did um, they say how it works inside of the restaurant? Can she come down? There's seats outside. Oh, okay, so we could probably order and eat out here. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Right. Let's start getting stuff off. The Ibis Hotel was advertised as a three star hotel. And if truth be told, that was a generous three-star rating. The room itself was clean, but small and basic. In fact, there was barely room to walk around the bed. Still, we were there for only one night, and we had an early start the following morning. After a hot shower, I finally got that cold beer I've been longing for. After a fairly forgettable pizza, we had a couple more drinks before having an early night. The day's motorway riding in the heat and the traffic had taken its toll on all of us but it appeared some were certainly more worn out than others. The ferry was due to leave at 10am with boarding closing an hour before at 0900. Not knowing how long boarding would take or how heavy the traffic would be, and with my faith in my beeline moto all but gone, 
we decided to have an early and as it turned out less than average breakfast before kickstands were up at 0700. In actual fact it turned out to be relatively simple to follow the signs to the tunnel and the ferry terminal on the opposite side of the Mersey. thinks you're a boy. It's because you got a boy harness. It's because ginger, isn't it? I know. <laughs> oh, she's gorgeous. I love all the dogs in here. He's next. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. They are all so nice. Hmm? They are all so nice up this way. Oh, God, I'm so nervous. Oh, Have you taken your tablet? No, I, no, yeah. Take no. it now. Have you got it yeah. handy? Can you hold it? So that's your one? Yeah, thanks. Your bike and then that's your one. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. And that's the pin for the pet kennel. It's on deck seven, all right? Deck seven. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thanks. There's a right hand side. See where the car is? Yes. You parked the right hand side. Right hand side of that. Thank you very much, sir. Motorbikes are much quicker than cars until you have to stop and speak to someone, aren't they? <laughs>
Well, they left their kid in the car as well. <laughs> I couldn't leave her anywhere. Baby, don't go in there. When she said, I'll just get you and then you go through security, I thought we'd have to get off and open bags and things. The boarding procedure turned out to be beautifully simple. We received our boarding passes and were asked to wait outside of the lines of cars. The plan being to board the bikes first. As it turned out, we're the only two bikes in this crossing. After an hour or so of waiting for the car park to fill with cars, we were waved forward and as luck would have it, I ended up being first up the ramp. Carrie being prone to seasickness had already taken her anti-nausea tablet and had put on her magnetic anti-motion sickness bracelets. As if seasickness wasn't bad enough, she'd also been flapping about riding up the steep, slippery slopes on the ferry. I still had memories of the filthy, grimy roll-on, roll-off ferries from childhood trips in the 80s, and inside I was also dubious about boarding. The last thing I needed to do was stack it in front of several hundred other passengers and crew members. It turns out I needn't have worried, as the decks were spotless and the ramps were coated with an anti-slip textured surface. But another concern was going to be how the bikes were secured to the deck. I brought a couple of heavy duty ratchet straps to double up on security. Or as we Irish are fond of saying, to be sure, to be sure. As it turns out, my concerns were ill-founded, but more than that later. In fact, from start to finish, the whole boarding process was well drilled and slick and professional. And I take my hat off to the Stena Line staff. Okay, thanking you. Now tell everyone what you were stressed about. I was stressed about leaving the dog in the kennel and riding my bike up a slippery ramp. <laughs> and how was it? It was absolutely fine. Both things. <laughs> yeah, really well led out actually the uh, dog thing and actually get the bikes were allowed to go on first. So yeah, big thumbs up to Stena so far. <laughs> Let's hope for a nice calm crossing. Yeah, we'll go and have a look and see how the security bikes in a little bit once we get underway. Greener than an Irish environmentalist. What have you got? Show, show everyone what you've got. Yeah. Taking, <laughs> taking tablets as well. I feel really good at the moment. <laughs> Right, folks, very quickly, they've uh, secured the bike down. As you can see there, they put a big massive strap across. If you are coming on, leave your bike in gear, um, and if you can, disable the alarm. If not, leave your key fob somewhere discreet to stop the alarm going off. But uh, yeah, pretty good job. Um, as you see, they put pads and everything on it, so yeah, pretty pleased. Uh, we don't have a cabin for this uh, trip because it's a day sailing, so we don't really need one. But if you do do a night sailing, you probably want to get a cabin. Just give you a quick tour when this one's open. So this this is obviously a family one that sleeps four. I don't know if you can see, there's like a two double dump bump. Let's try it again. Two double bunk beds on either side. I mean, I've got to say, this ship is absolutely spotless. It really, really is. So big thumbs up to uh, Stena Line. Um, yeah, can't fault it so far. Brilliant. Yeah, look, at, look at that, look at the carpet and everything. Brilliant. Yeah. It's cleaner than most houses. And we're off. How late are we? Late. Half an hour. Half an hour late, but we're off anyway. like a nice peaceful cruise cagers <laughs> so we've just got underway we're going in to check on Dolly see if I should get on Working all the dogs are going to each other. What are you locked up for? What are you in for? Come, come, come to mummy. Come, up, up, up. Good girl. Oh, should 
What do you reckon, Dolly? Give us a review. <laughs> mm. Don't leave me. <laughs> it's, n it's nice in here, really cool, air conditioned. Yeah, You've got uh, uh, fresh water, everything for your dog, and they supply these uh, blue uh, mats. Yeah, and it is locked, you get a pin code to, to get in and out, so it's definitely secure. So there's your kennels and you've got a pin code to uh, access the door and then this bit here it's a bit wet because I think they hold it down because this is actually the poop deck. See what I did there? Yeah this is really really wet let out. These uh, mats are for the dogs um, that are hung up so if there's none in the uh, the kennels hanging up you can uh, get one out here but they've got everything in there they've got bowls with the water got poop bags on the wall. Yeah, really, really, really impressed. And I'll have a hot chocolate if that's okay as well, okay. please. Thank you. I'll have the mint infusion tea. Yeah. Sorry, it's right. only just seen that, so no hot chocolate. I'm so sorry. This is your first day and I'm confusing Like mystery shoppers, aren't yeah. we? And really, <laughs> really bad mystery shoppers. <laughs> so that's America. 2870, so you need to lick the plate. Go on. Still tough. Hello, hello. Huh? Yo, this one. Yo, the Good girl. Good girl. You alright, Dolly? Little salty sea dog. Getting off the ferry was just as painless as it had been getting on. And once again I have to pay credit to the Stenoline staff for a slick and well drilled operation. Carrie's morbid terror of anything to do with boats and seasickness had proved to be ill founded. In truth we had been incredibly lucky with the crossing. The Irish Sea is renowned for being quite chobby, a direct result of St Patrick placing every single snake in Ireland into a bag and chucking them into the Irish Sea. Luckily the snakes must have been asleep. For during our crossing, the sea had been like a mill pond. As we left the ferry terminal, we got a wave from a family who had befriended us on the crossing. They'd also brought their dog along, and the wife, also having an abnormal and irrational fear of seasickness, found a kindred spirit in Kerry. This family were taking their children on an ad hoc road trip of Northern Ireland. On their drive from Derby to Liverpool, the exhausted had fallen off their battered old Ford. Rather than call Endex, and despite their car sounding like a chieftain tank, they continued with the trip, hoping to find a garage to get a quick repair as they drove into Belfast. You see, just like the rest of us, they had been forced to wait for far too long to have a family adventure, and they certainly weren't going to let a silly little broken exhaust stop them. And while this simple event may be heartwarming and comical, perhaps there's a lesson we can all take from this that life never ever runs smoothly and we should both expect and accept debacles and drama with the same good humour and stoicism as we readily embrace success and good fortune. I once read somewhere, life should not be about avoiding storms, rather it should be about learning to dance in the rain. For me the journey out of Belfast and along the coast as we headed north towards my parents home was the epitome of our journey so far. The early evening was warm but pleasant, a far cry from the stifling and overpowering heat of yesterday's motorway riding. We had perhaps only 40 minutes of riding to my parents, but as life has always been, 
and will always be in Ireland. There was simply no rush. We had one stop to make in Carrick Fergus and it was a most essential stop. We were both parched after our travels and deserving of a large cold glass of wine. The best thing about riding motorcycles for me is that even the most familiar roads become mini adventures. There's something incredibly simplistic and deliciously basic about riding that only bikers truly understand. So friends, ride as often as you can, because as humans, all too often we fall into that trap of overthinking things and ultimately convincing ourselves not to do things. And as part one of our adventure draws to a close, I'll leave you with this parting thought that as an old biker once wrote, a long ride not only helps you find the answers, it also helps you forget the questions. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> you don't like that, Morris, as much? No.